When non-avian dinosaurs were first discovered, the only certainty about them was that they were no longer around. And for over a hundred years, numerous ideas floated around on how they disappeared, from ideas like disease all the way to dark matter. But in 1980, a new one entered the fray, which would end up becoming the most agreed-upon assumption by a long mile, the Alvarez hypothesis. It introduced paleontologists to the idea of an asteroid taking out the dinosaurs, and because of the supporting evidence, it ended up sticking. With this, most believed that there was a conclusive answer on how the dinosaurs died, but no one was asking how they were doing up until that point. That is until the 2010s, when a bombshell study announced that dinosaurs were already on their way out by the time the asteroid reached them. But like many new hypotheses, there was backlash, and from then to now, there has been many new reports on the topic, some that claim that dinosaurs were thriving, while others reinforcing that they were indeed fading away. Which begs the question, who is right? Well, it turns out that the answer is, it's complicated, and also depends on one's perception of what it means to thrive. When the idea of dinosaurs already being in a poor state arose, the data provided painted a picture that the group had been experiencing extreme hardships well before the impact, with some saying that the problem started 40 to 50 million years before the end of the Cretaceous implying that even in the early Cretaceous, the dinosaurs were dying. What the researchers found was that many groups on a major level were experiencing a diversity decline. They took a look at the history of dinosaurs and created models of their progressions through time and noticed that species were disappearing faster than they were emerging. They also noted that some groups seemed to be harder hit than others, with sauropods showing the least amount of diversity, represented by the fact that so far only one sauropod is known to have existed in North America during the dinosaurs' last days, the Alamosaurus. On the other hand, theropods seem to have been doing better, specifically larger ones, albeit they too were showing a gradual decline. Despite the indication of less species overall, many were still speculative, with some arguing that the fossil data was too incomplete to tell if the dinosaurs were going extinct, and others saying that the studies were too narrow, only focusing on certain areas of the world rather than taking a global look at the state of dinosaurs. Yet despite the pushback, more and more studies were conducted on the dinosaurs' apparent fall from grace, and many of the findings actually reinforced the original claim that the terrible lizards were already going out of business. One group used a more detailed model that analyzed a wider range of species, and biodiversity was yet again reported to be low. And another group stated that the dinosaurs' troubles could be seen by simply comparing younger fossil beds to older ones, like those dated back to the Jurassic, as the Jurassic ones had a superior number of species with one in particular, the Morse information, possessing over 35. And the latest word on the matter of the dinosaurs' quote-unquote health also suggested it was a grim situation, this time using eggs as evidence. The researchers found over 1,000 hadrosaur eggs, which all came from just three species, Elongatulithus elongatus, Macrolithus yautunesis, and Stromatulithus pinglingensis. This, in their eyes, confirmed that something was causing the dinosaurs to decline. But what? To many paleontologists, the answer was not a space entity, but rather volcanic eruptions. There are other ideas too, yet for the most part, many who believe that the dinosaurs were struggling think that massive volcanic eruptions, specifically originating from the Deccan Traps, were killing the dinosaurs. The Deccan Traps are one of the largest volcanic features on Earth, which while active could have spewed out enough gas and smoke to heavily disturb the climate, leading to fluctuations that hampered the dinosaurs, and enough so that species started to slowly die out, and in the minds of many was a key reason why they didn't survive the asteroid as fewer species of dinosaurs meant that the group as a whole was less adaptable to the devastating effects of the collision. However, there is still a good number of paleontologists who believe that even though the dinosaurs were less diverse at the time, they were still thriving. And this is also when one's perspective comes into play. Because despite there being fewer species during the late Cretaceous, many point out that the dinosaurs still had a global distribution extending all the way to polar regions, a sign that the group were doing just fine. Plus, not only only were they present, but they virtually dominated every niche they inhabited. Populations of dinosaurs were also stable during the late Cretaceous, and in fact growing in some parts of the world, prompting the question of which is thriving more, an environment where there are 80,000 dinosaurs represented by only one species, or an environment that has 20,000, yet six species. Nevertheless, many paleontologists interpreted the high number of fauna as a clear indication that the dinosaurs would have continued dominating the Earth if the asteroid never showed up. 
though admit that the lack of diversity harmed their ability to survive the impact. And this seems to be where a standstill has been created, with one side of the argument saying that dinosaurs were doing just fine as there was no apparent drop in numbers, while the other side believes that dinosaurs were already going extinct, as reflected by the low diversity in their final days. And these two takes is also why one's definition of thriving could make them believe either side of the argument. And of course, there are then those who are in between, taking a more reserved approach, saying that for now, there simply isn't enough data to accurately say how dinosaurs were doing and if they would still be thriving if it wasn't for the KT extinction events.